Hey guys, welcome back. For today's video, I am going to be testing out Flesh Cosmetics, which is a new brand at Ulta. I'm so excited because I created this look, and you guys are going to have to just watch the whole video to see what I loved and what I didn't love. I ended up loving things that I didn't expect to love, and I ended up not liking things that I didn't expect. You guys are just going to watch the whole video to see. But I... Okay, I don't want to give anything away, so I'm not even going to say my thoughts. But I really hope you guys enjoy. I would love to hear if you've tried this brand and what you think, because... Yeah, just let me know in the comments. Hopefully this is helpful if you're looking into maybe shopping some things on the line. I don't have any major updates, but I hope you guys are having a fabulous day or night whenever you are watching this video. And let's just go ahead and jump into it. It's going to be a long one, so don't forget to grab a snack, subscribe to my channel before you leave, and let's get started. Okay, so the brows are filled in, and I also did apply some eyeshadow primer. I just used my NARS Soft Matte Concealer in the shade Medium 1 Custard, which is what I always use. I love this. It's my fave. I'm going to be using this flush eyeshadow palette it says it's a tidy palette that holds seven perfect neutrals one flashy gold and a brave bright bold pink now this color more so looks like a pink purple it's kind of like a fuchsia color it's not straight up pink but it's not straight up purple so we shall see <laughs> um i'm gonna start off okay there isn't actually a color in here to set my lid i'm gonna just use this nyx no filter powder and i'm just gonna run that right over top of my crease using an elf flawless concealer brush just because I always feel like I need to set my lids. If not, my eyeshadow is just going to crease and look crazy. So I'm going to start off with a blending brush. This one is from BH Cosmetics. And I'm going to be taking the soft transition color in here. It is sort of like a soft taupey brown. And I'm going to be applying that right in the crease. Okay, I'm going to take a different brush because I feel like that's not really applying the product the way that I like. Let's go in with something a little bit bigger. I'm going to use a Morphe M511. Oh, that's much better. Honestly, I really don't go in with colors like this. Usually, it's funny because I used to love colors like this when I was in high school, but now I love my warm tone, so this is very different for me. This is definitely a cool tone, like brown shade, and it's just so different. I'm really trying to build it up because I feel like if you don't, it's kind of just like blah. Okay, I'm going to go in with the deeper dark brown and I'm going to apply that on the outer part of my crease. Kind of doing packing motions with this brush, which is the M433 from Morphe, and then I'm going to gradually blend it out. I will say though there is not a lot of fallout with these eyeshadows which is good already I like the way that this eyeshadow blends more than the one that I previously used I feel like it's a little bit more pigmented and it's just a little bit smoother okay let's go in with a bronze color I'm gonna apply that on the inner part of my lid I'm going to use this flat ColourPop brush that I have and I'm not gonna spray my brush just because I want to see how this applies just on its own Okay, so the color shows up, but it's kind of like blah. Like, it's not really super intense. Like I definitely feel like I need to spray my brush. Let's try with the finger. Mm, it's a little bit better. I'm going to try spraying the brush and see what happens. Okay, it's not bad. It's not like amazing though. Like I'm not like falling off of my chair. You know what I mean? Okay, um, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of that darker taupe color and apply that sort of like right next to that bronzy shade that I used. And I'm gonna take this Vanity Planet brush. It's kind of like a flat concealer brush-ish. And I'm gonna just spray that because I just feel like it's gonna apply much better. I'm going to kind of like apply that sort of like on the center-ish of the lid. It's kind of like the same color as the crease shade except it has a shimmer to it. It's pretty actually. This color is pretty. Okay. 
I'm going to take the white shade and apply that right onto the brow bone. It's pretty actually. It's a pretty pigmented shade. And the brush that I'm using is an M213 from Morphe. I will say though, there actually isn't a lot of fallout in this palette, which I think is pretty rare. There's a lot of eyeshadow palettes that have just a ton of fallout, which normally doesn't bother me, but I know a lot of people don't really like that in a palette. So, I mean, that is a good thing about this palette in particular. But for me so far, the colors are kind of just like blah. Like I'm just not super like blown away. Like I mentioned, like I'm not like shaking right now with this palette like I don't feel like it's anything special so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and just pop on some lashes and then we're gonna move into skin and the lips which I'm so excited about so maybe I think the lashes will really help with pulling this look together but I'll be right back and I'll see you guys in one second Okay, so I will leave the lashes that I used down below. A subscriber actually sent them to me, so I will leave her info and everything for her lash company in the description box below if you guys are interested. She has so many different beautiful styles. Okay, so now we are jumping into foundation, and I am very curious to see how this foundation is going to work because I don't know if you guys can see, but this is so freaking tiny. Like, I literally thought this was a sample size. But I'm still going to give it a fair shot, so we'll see if it works, if it's any good. We'll see. So I actually did get a primer also. I'm going to prime one side of my face with this primer that I got from Flesh and the other side with a different one just because this is an illuminating primer. I should probably read the claims about the primer. Let me go ahead and grab my phone and go on Ulta's website because I did take everything out of the packaging just to save time obviously when filming. By the way, don't mind my hair in today's video. I just got out of the shower and I washed it so I'm just letting it air dry like I always do. Okay, this primer is very expensive. This is $32. It says it's a light and lustrous priming serum that gives skin a glowy touchable look, creates a smooth radiant canvas. Whether it's worn alone or under makeup, blue and purple photo reflecting agents to add radiance to face and improve appearance of dull Skin. It has B5 and glycerin. Okay, so basically it's an illuminating primer. Um, I guess it's a pretty good size for the price. I mean, whatevs. It comes with a pump, which I appreciate. I'm gonna just apply this on the right side of my face. Oh, it feels really nice. It feels like a gel moisturizer. Mmm, it smells really good too. Oh my god, this literally feels like a gel moisturizer and I'm obsessed. If you guys watch me, you know that I love gel moisturizers. They're my favorite. I see really tiny specks of glitter in it, which usually not a fan of, but it does feel really, really nice. Um, I don't really honestly feel like it did a lot of like illuminating. Like it's really, really light. It's nothing crazy. It is pretty though. I could see myself using this. It does have little specks of glitter. Like they're very microscopic. Like I feel like you can only tell that you have glitter on your face if you're like looking super up close. So just a little FYI. I want to see how this is going to look with just my favorite primers as well. So I'm going to use my Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer on the other side. And this is more of a smoothing primer and really helps with oil control. So two totally completely different primers. I'm also going to prime my skin with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water just because typically I would do this anyway. Sometimes I do this before I apply like my actual primers on my face. Sometimes I do it after. It doesn't really matter to me honestly. It doesn't make a huge difference. Now we can jump into foundation. Okay so I got three different shades. Um, I got the shade Honey, Butter, and Dulce de Leche. I actually thought Dulce de Leche would be a contour shade for me. I thought it was going to be a lot darker, and it's actually not. It could be like a super tan shade for me. So I'm probably going to go in today with the shade Butter. I feel like the shade Honey is way too light for me at the moment because I do have some color. So I'll probably save this if this is a good foundation for when I'm lighter. But today we're going to go in with these two. So there are 40 colors, which is pretty good for a new foundation that usually doesn't happen. It says it's a multi-purpose foundation stick. Delivers a creamy, boltable payoff. It's a makeup that lets you cover, conceal, contour, and highlight on your own terms it's medium coverage with luminous light dewy finish it's not chalky creamy blendable fragrance free okay so let's just go with it and see what happens again this is very very little product in my opinion for a stick foundation for the price I feel like that's kind of like oh this color is gonna be too light okay so the shade butter is too light for me so I'm gonna just take the shade dulce de leche and I feel like this might be a little too dark maybe yeah. 
It's like I need a shade in between that, but we're gonna just make it work. It already feels like a really thick foundation, just like right off the bat. And I'm gonna, I guess, mix a little bit of this shade Butter as well, just because Butter is way too light, and then I feel like the other one's a little too dark, so I hopefully mixing them will just create some sort of magical concoction here. I'm gonna start off by applying this with my Damp Beauty Blender because Stick foundations are one of those things where I feel like sometimes it applies better with a brush, sometimes it applies better with a beauty blender. It kind of just depends on the formula of the foundation. Okay, it's fairly thick. I obviously feel like the color is going to be off. But I feel like with concealer and stuff, I'm going to be able to make it work. That's why I don't really get super stressed out when it comes to foundation shades because every time I do my makeup, I feel like it doesn't always look perfect as far as the shade, but once I finish everything else, it all comes together in the end. I do see that luminosity coming through. I don't know if it's just the foundation or the primer, but I definitely see it. It is blending really well. I'm actually really liking it with the Beauty Blender. Let's go ahead and do a sponge and see what happens. Or the brush, I meant. <laughs> I'm gonna use the Koki 618 brush from Walmart. Oh, this is thick. It's very hard to blend, I feel like, with the brush. I definitely feel like it applies and blends better with the sponge. Definitely more matte on this side right here compared to this one. It's very, very luminous. I hope you can see that. And here, it's definitely more of just like matte. So primers make a difference. Honestly, I kind of like the way the matte side looks better with a brush. Okay, I actually really like it with a brush. I think it looks way better. Okay, so right here we have the Beauty Blender side. It's very dewy, looks a little bit more fresh and hydrated. And then right here we have the brush side. It looks more matte. You can still see a little bit of dewiness peeking through, which could be the foundation, which does claim that it is to be dewy. And I did use that Tatcha primer as well, which absorbs oil and smooths your skin out, so that could be it as well. But I'm honestly gearing more towards this side, especially just because the foundation is a little bit thicker. And I find that a lot of stick foundations can be a little thick, a little more oily than most liquid foundations, so I prefer something that is more matte when it comes to a stick foundation versus super dewy. Obviously the color is off. I had to mix two shades which I feel like that kind of sucks because if you are buying a foundation that's already $18 and you have to mix the shade it turns into a very expensive foundation so I don't know about that. The coverage is actually really good. I do prefer again the coverage with the brush. I feel like it looks better. It looks just a little bit better. This is a little too dewy for me right now um, especially just because it's so hot here in Pennsylvania. I don't really feel like I need all this extra dewiness just because also the foundation is so thick. I think with concealer and everything it's going to look much better. I'm going to go in with the Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade Warm Beige. Obviously this brand does not carry everything so we are just going to do with what we got. <laughs> I feel like I want to really like the foundation but one of the things that I also don't love about it is the fact that there isn't a lot of product in it. I feel like for the price and for what you're getting, it doesn't really equal out to be the greatest value. Okay, yeah, this side is definitely way more full coverage, especially with this concealer combo. Like, I would like to probably use that luminizing primer with a different foundation, not with a stick foundation. I feel like stick foundations are best with smoothing and mattifying primers because they tend to be a little bit, like I said, just more creamy and just more thicker than most. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the concealer. You can see it's definitely more coverage. It's a little actually heavy on the skin. It feels a little cakey. Mind you, I did use a lot of foundation as well. I used a lot of stripes on my face just because I wanted to mix the colors, but it is a little bit thick. I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up my face because I know this is just a flesh cosmetics video and I don't want to keep you guys here too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set my under eye concealer, probably do some contouring and stuff and then I'll come back and we'll do blush, highlighter. Oh wait! Almost forgot. Okay, so I actually got these Flesh Whisper Glistening Drops, and I'm really excited about these. What I'm going to do is just apply this right onto the back of my hand. Okay, the dropper isn't really dropping the product down, so I'm literally just going to do this. And I'm going to just take my sponge 
And I'm going to apply this right to the tops of my cheekbones. Mm, it's pretty, but it's not really honestly super intense. It's like really, really natural, which that's personal preference. But usually I feel like glistening drops are supposed to be more like bam in your face type thing. These are definitely more on the natural side, which could be pretty. I think maybe if you want to mix it in with a foundation or something or a BB cream. But like if you guys have used the Makeup Revolution highlighter drops, those are more intense. I don't know if maybe these are meant to be a little bit lighter since they are glistening drops, not really like liquid highlighter type thing, you know what I mean? We'll see how it looks once I apply some powder highlighter over top. So officially, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna finish up my face and then we'll talk more face products and lip products. Okay, so I finished up the rest of my face. I will leave my makeup details down below, everything that isn't flesh if you guys are interested. So I'm gonna move into blush. So this is the Flesh Blush in the shade Glaze. I'm sorry that I keep saying flesh. It's such a weird name, right? Like for makeup, it's very strange. But this one is the shade Glaze and these are actually a lot smaller than what I expected. Um, let me just compare it to a different blush that I have. Just comparing it, for example, to like a L'Oreal blush that I have here. These are the new Peach Paradise ones. The flesh one is much, much smaller. So just comparing the product, you get 0.14 ounces. In the L'Oreal one, you get 0.31. So you basically get double the product in the L'Oreal one versus this flesh one, which is kind of like... Okay, so I'm, I will say that you can still kind of see the glistening drops sort of peeking through slightly. I feel like those are really going to be great if you don't really like to glow a lot and you want something really natural and radiant from within. There's some people who don't like an intense glow and that's totally fine and I feel like those glistening drops could be for you. So I'm going to go in with this blush right here. I'm going to use this really old brush that I have. It's from Sonia Kashuk, which you can find at Target. And let's just see what happens. This is like a really natural wash of color. Looks really pretty. It's pretty. It's really pigmented, as you can see. Oh, wow. It is really pretty. This is actually a really nice sort of like okay but too much but it's like a bronzy blush toned color i'm gonna just use this large powder brush from elf just to blend this out oh wow it blends really easily that's good okay the blush is actually a lot prettier than what i expected okay next up for highlight this is actually a good size i expected the blush to be this sort of size as well this is the highlighter in the shade jump and this just looks like a nice sort of like light champagne i'm going to be using my anastasia a23 brush which is one of my faves oh that's pretty It's actually not like as powdery as I thought it was gonna be. Like just looking at it, it looks like it's just gonna be like a really dry highlighter, but when you apply it, it's actually pretty. It definitely is not a wet highlighter. It, you can see it, it's glowy and pretty, but it is, it's not dry and powdery, but it's more on the drier side, if that makes sense. Like you can't really compare this to like a Becca highlighter, for example, or even like Wet n Wild, where you really get that wet glow. This is a little bit more of a drier formula. But it's not as powdery as I thought. I'm gonna finish up the lower lashes and the inner corner and all that jazz. I'm gonna actually just take this color right here, which is sort of like a light champagne, and I'm gonna apply that in the inner corner of my eyes. I'm actually gonna mix that also with the white right above it. You know I have to use that purple, so I'm going to apply that shade right on the lower lashes. I'm using an e.l.f. contour brush for the eyes. The color is not really as intense as it looks. Alright, I'm going to swap out brushes. I'm going to use this pencil brush from Wet n Wild to really concentrate that product a little bit better. I really love the e.l.f. brush, it's just a little bit bigger and I feel like the, it's not really picking up the product the way that I want it to. 
This one's doing a little bit better job. But you definitely have to build it up. It's not going to be like straight up purple right off the bat. It actually looks kind of pink. So it's definitely like a fuchsia. It's pink, it's purple, it's both. Okay, so now we have lip products. I actually got three different kinds of their lip products because they had different varieties. So I went with the first thing, which is actually just like the regular lipstick. And I got this really hot color. Ooh, it kind of matches my nails. Um, so this one is in the shade Soul, and these are just their traditional lipsticks. I don't know why I'm smelling everything because everything claims to be no fragrance, which I can definitely agree on, by the way. And nothing has a scent so far, which is nice. Then this is the Fleshy Lips lipstick in the shade Hungry. And then I got a matte liquid lip color in the shade Brazen, which is like a really bright red. So we're gonna test all these out today. I'm gonna start off with the Fleshy Lip color in the shade Hungry first, cause it is the lightest shade. When I swatched this in my Ulta haul, it kinda looked like a lip balm type of thing. Not really a lipstick, so we'll see how it applies. I'm not gonna use any lip liner or anything, so let's just go with it. I mean, if you're into lip balm type things, and I guess you would like it, it's a pretty color, but I like stuff that's a little bit more pigmented. I can see somebody who is just like, not a big fan of color wearing this often. It's a pretty color, it's just, I mean, for what it's worth, do I really, really want to spend that kind of money on a thing that's more so like a lip balm than a lipstick? Probably not. All right, let's go in with the other lipstick. This one is in the shade Soul, like I mentioned. Okay, so this one's called the Strong Flesh Lipstick, and there's nine colors. This is a really nice shade. I, you guys should be proud. I stepped out of my comfort zone. Oh, it actually looks kind of red, but it's an orange color, or like a really bright orange. I did not expect this to be that pigmented. Now this is pigmented. Ooh, this is pretty, this is hot. Okay, I feel like I need to be like on vacation wearing this lipstick right now. This is totally summer. This is really pretty actually. This is probably like my favorite thing that I've tried out of the entire collection so far. Really comfortable, it doesn't feel drying. Went on super easy. I thought that was like really easy to apply even without a lip liner and you guys know I suck at applying lip products but this is good. And I actually like the fact that their products don't have a scent. I mean, normally I like products that smell like sweet and candy and stuff, but it's kind of refreshing for once to have something that doesn't smell like anything. Let's see if it's kiss proof. I really doubt it. Yeah, definitely not kiss proof. So if you wear this and you go to kiss your boo thing, it's not gonna be pretty. And then last but not least, we have the matte liquid lip color. Again, this one's in the shade Brazen. Formula actually doesn't feel terrible. I think it's just the applicator that I'm not a huge fan of. Ooh, my teeth look pretty white though. That's good. I love this color though. It's really, really pretty. It's like a gorgeous red. I really don't think this is going to be kiss proof, but let's give it a shot. Oh, wow. Oh, that is kiss proof. Okay. Dries down really, really quick. I love how it matches my nails too. Um, okay, I actually really like this color. I think with some lip liner, this I'm obsessed with. So I'm gonna just spray my face really quick just to set this makeup. I'm gonna apply some earrings and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so that completes this video. Let me know what you think. I am really curious to hear your thoughts and if you guys are gonna be testing out this brand. I'm really kind of like, like I don't love as many products as I thought I was gonna love to be quite honest with you so let's just talk about the things that I really didn't like um, just to give you guys a rundown on the product so first of all I really honestly like the way this foundation looks on my skin and I was just like when I was setting my makeup I was like wow like it looks really good you know I think I actually really like the foundation I love the shade range and then I wanted to see how much product was actually in this foundation so I twisted it up and this is honestly ridiculous. For $18, I think that this is honestly a ripoff. I mean, do you see how little product is in here? That's crazy. I am currently really loving the L'Oreal foundation stick, but there aren't the best shades in there. Like there's only like 12 or 14 shades, which I think kind of sucks, honestly. But if you want a really good stick foundation, I would recommend Makeup Revolution. They have a really great shade selection. Love that formula. It's creamy. It's blendable. It's honestly very similar to the L'Oreal one, except I think the shade range is way better. And I think the foundation is like $9 and you get so much more product than this. So I was like oh, this close to recommending this foundation until I saw how much product you get in here. And I'm just like, what the F? So I can't recommend something that I don't feel like you guys are going to actually get your money's worth. And honestly, I wouldn't repurchase that foundation. So 
I was very close. Good thing I looked at that. Also, this foundation primer, this is probably something that I could see myself using again. There are tiny specks of glitter in it. Um, when I was setting my makeup, I was really looking at myself up close and you can really see them. I'm not really sure if you can see them on camera. Probably not because they're really microscopic, but it's one of those things where it's like, why do you have to put glitter in a primer? It's a really great formula though. I love the way that it makes my skin feel. It is really pretty, so I'm probably gonna keep using this with maybe some of my favorite foundations and see how it wears but this is probably one of those things that I'm kind of still like eh, on the fence about. I really am not a fan of these glistening drops. I feel like they're a little too natural for me. If that's kind of what you're into, then I think you would like them, but again, with the amount of product in here, I don't think you get a lot. The packaging honestly feels kind of really light, like as if I used a lot of product and I really didn't, so for me, this is just a hard pass. I think that there's way better liquid highlighters on the market, drugstore and high-end. This for me is just not the best. Same goes for this highlighter. I mean like it's pretty but it's a little more powdery than what I'm used to. Once you start blending stuff away the highlighter kind of just goes on with it and it doesn't really stay on the skin. I mean it's there. It's really light but it's nothing that I personally go for. Um, I like things that are a little bit more wet, more intense and this is again nothing really mind-blowing. Like I'm not super like blown away by a lot of these products to the point where I feel like I would repurchase these over and over again and I would recommend them to you and I don't really see myself like using these constantly in my everyday makeup routine or just on my channel in general. This blush is actually really, really pretty. I actually forget how much it is. Let's look up the price again because I honestly forget. Okay, $26 for this. I probably wouldn't repurchase this. I probably wouldn't recommend this because I feel like there's way better blushes on the market. Maybe if this was like $14, I would probably, you know, try it again. But $26 is kind of pushing it a little bit just for the amount of product you get. And just for like the formula in general, like it's really pretty. It's blendable, but it's nothing out of this world amazing. I think there's way better blushes again on the market, better value, better quality, better color selection than this. This eyeshadow palette, I really, really do not like this. The colors are okay. They're honestly not shades that I would personally gravitate towards. That's kind of me being picky, but as far as the quality of the eyeshadows, I feel like they're kind of just like subpar. They're not really amazing, especially for the price of this palette. I expected a lot more. The packaging is kind of also really cheap, honestly. Um, I think there's just way better things that, I mean, at the drugstore that are just way better quality, way more high-end quality than this. Um, especially, I was really disappointed in this purple and like pink color. In here. I thought it was going to be really, really intense, and it's not. It's kind of just like really dry. You have to build it up, and even when you build it up, it's not going to be a super intense color. So I would definitely not repurchase or recommend this palette, like, whatsoever. This lipstick in the shade Hungry, I do not like just because it is so sheer. If you're into that kind of thing, I mean, I think this would be good for you, but... I don't I do not see myself using this definitely not after this video now let's get into the products that I did like I actually really love this liquid lipstick this color is perfection this is like the perfect true red I love the formula of it I think it's really comfortable I like how it's kiss proof I'm not a huge fan of the applicator but I can look past that I feel like I just need a really good lip liner and then it's so easy to apply but I also love this lipstick in the shade soul these are different than the one that I was just talking about this is not the same formula this is so opaque so beautiful and I really love this color for summer I think it is stunning I can imagine this on so many different skin tones I think it would look absolutely gorgeous honestly these are the only two things that I would really see myself repurchasing, trying out new colors, recommending to you guys the lipstick and the liquid lipstick. I did not expect that. I thought I was going to love a lot more things, but I think for the price and just the way these products perform, they are not really like meeting my standards just because there's so much other makeup out there that I think is like so much better for not just the price, but the quality as well. So that is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully, maybe... I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched till the very end, I hope you enjoyed me blabbering on about these products. Thank you for everything. I appreciate all of you guys, and I will see you in a few days in my next one. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah.